All right, so this video is not a video I thought I would be making personally. I did watch a couple comparisons between the C70 and the FX6, but when I was comparing the C70 to the FX6 a while back when I was making my decision, I didn't find a lot of image quality comparisons. My main draw to the C70 was the fact that its image looked different. The highlight roll off was beautiful. The dynamic range was really good. The colors were great. Obviously there are tons of other things that made me choose a C70, but a lot of those things the FX6 already had. So that image quality was my main draw. Now, after comparing these two different cameras, did I find enough of a difference for me to stick with the C70 over the FX6? This was a long drawn out process. It was a bittersweet comparison for me because the C70 was and kind of still is my favorite camera, but there's a specific reason why I chose to go with the camera that I did go with. And you're probably not gonna be able to guess it because it's kind of a weird reason but it's a reason for me nonetheless. So for these first tests, we started off outside shooting a subject that had really nice skin tone. It was really convenient because her skin tone was a little bit darker. So you can really capture the richness between each camera and how they play with skin tones, as well as the highlight roll off is much more obvious with darker skin tones like that. One thing I really noticed right off the bat with the C70 is that there seemed to be a lot more detail in the shadows. With the FX6, it seemed like there wasn't as much information in the shadows. You can really tell when you're looking at this image. If you see the parts of her hair that are deep in the blacks, it looks like they're solid black, even though with the C70's image, it isn't. You can actually see detail in her hair. And now when you see both images side by side, you can really tell the differences in the sensors. To the trained eye, you can tell right away. For most clients, you won't be able to tell. This wasn't a surprise to me though. The C70 is advertised as having more dynamic range and in CineD lab tests, it does show that it does have more dynamic range. But what I wanted to know and what probably some of you watching this video wanna know is if you can edit, lift the shadows and draw out more detail from the image to make it look more like the C70's image that just looks beautiful right off the bat. So for that, I did edit the FX6's image and put them side by side. And to my surprise, I could not tell that much of a difference. It actually started raining when we were doing our outside tests. As you can see from the B-roll, we were putting an umbrella over the cameras. So we ended up leaving and not doing all the tests that we wanted to. So I just set up the cameras in my living room where there were tons of shadows, browns, greens, as well as an open window. So I have both cameras pointed at this window where there are tons of highlights. It was high noon. And for the first test, I properly exposed both of the cameras just to see how they would look properly exposed. It really doesn't make a difference at this point but I wanted to see if I could tell a difference. Just like our other tests, you can tell with the C70's image that there are more details in the shadows. Like where the throw blanket is on the ottoman, you can tell there's more detail, as well as other parts of the images where there are heavy shadows, there's just inherently more detail with the C70. But one thing to note though, is that I was able to lift the shadows and there was still the information there with the FX6. But for the next test, I did overexpose both of the cameras. And here's where you can really tell that the C70 does have more highlight detail. And then for our next test where we underexposed and lifted up the shadows so that it would be properly balanced with the window, it's the same story, the C70 just has more detail. The FX6 is noisier in the shadows. It still has the detail, but it's a little bit noisier and you can tell the dynamic range is just not as good. It's still really good, but not as good as the C70. Keep in mind, you can clean this up in post with denoiser and make it look like the C70's image pretty much, but I wanted to be fair and call a spade a spade and the C70 just has more dynamic range than the FX6. I was really surprised with the FX6 though, but I'll save my strong opinions for the end of the video. 
Now we'll go into the usability of these two cameras and what I've experienced handling the FX6 over the past couple weeks. The main benefit of the FX6 over the C70 was how ergonomic this camera is. It's actually kind of wild to me. I know that a heavier camera and an evenly distributed camera produces nice, natural looking handheld footage. When I put the footage from the FX6 in the editor, I didn't even stabilize it because it looked natural. It looked like handheld footage that you would see in movies or high-end commercials or anything like that. And that's something I personally didn't experience with the C70. So that's definitely a win for the FX6. One little thing that wasn't mentioned when I was watching FX6 reviews or C70 versus FX6 comparisons is how annoyingly loose the side handle is. It's incredibly ergonomic, but it's very loose it makes noises it's not something i would expect from a six thousand dollar cinema camera and that was kind of annoying to me it's ergonomic its usability is great but it wiggles and creates a good amount of noise while you're using it not a deal breaker for me but it's something that for some reason i didn't hear about in any fx6 review that i watched personally so I figured I would mention it. On the other hand, the C70 does have many features that make it more user-friendly. It has, I think, three more stops of ND than the FX6, which if you're shooting on a bright sunny day at F2.8 or F1.8, whatever, even shallower, you 100% would need those extra stops of ND. So that is a plus. Another plus with the C70 is that you don't need the top handle to use its audio inputs. I personally really like the top handle of the FX6, but that is a plus for the C70 because you just don't need it. It's easier to fly on a gimbal and capture ambient audio in that way. On the topic of NDs, the FX6's variable ND is actually really nice as opposed to the hard stops that the C70 has. It's much easier to dial in my exposure if I ever needed to. And now for the camera that I decided to keep, and that is the FX6 that I'm shooting on right here. And it's for a couple different reasons, but one specific reason, and that is that Canon really screwed me over. It's a very long story, but they made a huge mistake that cost me a little over a thousand dollars and they didn't really own up to it. They made a bunch of excuses and it might sound petty to you, but I didn't really want to support a company that did that. Maybe if there's enough interest, just let me know in the comments section if you want to hear the story. I will share it, but I don't want to go into details for this specific video, but I did end up even looking for an FX6 because of that reason. With that being said though, I always wanted an FX6. When I shot with Sony for a couple years, I literally switched from the Sony ecosystem because I wanted to upgrade to a cinema camera that had internal NDs. But if you remember, the FX6 wasn't available anywhere for like two years. So I couldn't find one and I ended up getting a Komodo and a C70. Initially, I did have my concerns buying the FX6 over the C70. But after doing these tests, and I don't know if you'd agree or not, I am feeling a lot more confident with the FX6's image. And it's not that big of a difference compared to the C70. And that's not something I was personally expecting. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, consider subscribing. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you thought the tests were dumb, let me know. I'm just kidding, don't tell me. I will be making more content on the FX6 as I use it more on different corporate shoots and really dive deep on how to rig this camera out, what microphones to use and all of that as it's a different type of camera. So if you're interested in any of that, consider subscribing as well as I'd love to hear your thoughts on the actual image comparisons and all of that. Maybe it was a placebo for me, but I stared at these images for hours and came to the conclusion that it wasn't that much of a difference for me to get rid of the FX6 and stick with a company that burned me pretty bad. <laughs> That's a pretty big statement to make about a camera company, but it did happen and it just, it is what it is. So. That's all for this video and I'll see you in the next one.